Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one, we're answering a question from Sparky B, uh, who asks, "How do you pick which versions of Python to support?" Uh, and <laughs> it's kind of a complicated answer, uh, but I'm going to talk about my own personal opinions on this topic. Uh, this might not apply to everyone else, but you might be able to use some of the same heuristics that I use in order to figure that out for you as well. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so. Um, the first and foremost, like the, the most basic case uh, to, to answer this question, actually, I'm going to break this down based on the types of things uh, that I create. The first and the easiest to answer is things that are entirely for me um, and aren't, you know, they're either like applications that no one else will use or they are personal scripts. Um, and for those types of things, I don't really care about, you know, other people using this software. I'm really only building this software for myself. And in those cases, I will just support whatever version is convenient for me. Uh, currently for me, what this means usually is uh, I will target, you know, the Python 3 version uh, for the current long-term support release of the operating system I'm using. So in, in this case, uh, Python 3, which ships with Ubuntu 20.04, is Python 3.8, and so I will generally write my scripts targeting Python 3.8. Uh, now, in the past, you know, the, the latest Python 3 version might not have been the most convenient. So like, for instance, when, you know, 3.6 came out, uh, 3.6 had much nicer features. And so I decided, you know, the inconvenience of getting Python 3.6 didn't outweigh the features I was getting from it. And so I moved almost all my personal products to use Python 3.6 instead. Uh, but for now, you know, everything past Python 3.6 hasn't really had well, it, it's had some good features, but none of them have been as groundbreaking as the, you know, variable annotations and F strings with by 3.6. So I haven't felt, you know, super compelled to take my personal projects and update them. Um, the next easiest thing to answer for this question is if the particular library needs a specific feature of a specific Python version in order to function. Uh, there's not many of these in my in my things that I maintain. Uh, but one example of that is uh, import time waterfall, which is a library that I wrote to uh, profile imports. And this uses the X import time tracing functionality. And this was added in Python 3.7. So I necessarily couldn't support Python 3.6 for this library. Uh, I probably could have. I probably could have monkey patched the import statement and done some fancy stuff. But anyway, I, I didn't. So uh, this library is 3.7 plus because, because it needs a specific version or a specific feature from that version of Python. Uh, but this one's kind of a special case. Um, beyond that, I really think about like my users and what proportion of my users are running what versions of Python. And for that, what I'll often do is I'll go to pypistats.org, which is this website here. Uh, I will search up my particular package. So let's say we looked at pre-commit. Uh, we click through to this. Uh, PyPIStats.org has useful download statistics. So you can see, like, um, for instance, if we look at kind of a normal day, oh, let's look at the proportions. That one's a little bit easier. About 82 or 80, 80 to 85 percent of my downloads for pre commit are Python 3, which actually is kind of low. I kind of expect that to be a little bit higher. Uh, I guess, you know, 10 percent are null. So probably closer to 90%. Um, but yeah, and like PyPI stats can be really helpful for uh, deciding when to drop a version of Python. Like if you're looking at your, your usage statistics and you see that, you know, less than a percentage of your users are using a particular version, it's probably okay to drop that version at that point. Um, it also breaks it down by minor versions. So you can see here, uh, this one's a lot harder to read, but uh, let's see. At a normal day, about 33% of my users are running Python 3.8. Uh, and the lowest is like, well, there's there's those 0% ones, but you can see about 5% of my users are using Python 3.5. Um, but yeah, this can be helpful to, you know, break down, break down the particular versions of what you're using and decide support based on that. Um, but yeah, I often I often look at this uh, to decide that, but you know, this is this is just a tool. Oh, I wonder what it looks like for PyTest. That's another thing that I maintain. Interesting, like weird downward trend here. I don't know what that's about. Maybe it's maybe I'm just seeing things. Um, but we can see here. Uh, wow, that's a weird spike in the last day. 
25% are using Python 2. I guess 80 to 15% is probably closer to the, the actual value. I don't actually know what null is here. My guess is there's like some scraper or like some broken version of, of pip or another packaging tool that doesn't report the proper version information. Um, it looks like it started <laughs> around uh, October of last year. Yeah, October of last year. Uh, but anyway, okay, so that's one way I design versions is I look at the statistics and feel uh, kind of feel out how much my users are using. Uh, the other thing that I will look at is whether upstream has dropped support for a particular version of Python. Um, so if we look at like Python 3.6 release schedule pep, for instance, um, and there's a there's a pep for every release of every Python version. And so you can see here, uh, you know, like when when the first release came out, and when the end of life is, Let's see, and when's end of support? Uh, you can see like when you know feature freeze happens, as well as when um, you know the last bug fix happens. Usually, once bug fix hit, bug fixes happen, uh, Python will not make any more binary releases, but they will backport security patches. And so you can see three six is already in that phase, so it's no longer you know part of the. Uh, Part, part of the normally released Pythons. And so these are source only releases. Uh, it looks like, yeah, Python 3.6 will be end of life at the end of 2021. Um, and so, you know, when CPython stops supporting stuff, that's a pretty good indication to stop supporting it myself. Um, you know, the, the, the upstream uh, <laughs> maintenance is usually a pretty good cadence. And so it's something to consider there. Um, and the last thing is, the last thing that I use to decide whether I support something or not, is uh, how convenient it is for me to support stuff. Because you know, it, it takes considerably more work to support older and older versions of Python, uh, and especially to support a bunch of different versions of Python. And so I will uh, somewhat aggressively try and deprecate older versions so that I have fewer things to manage myself. Um, I don't often you know, cut off old versions though, so let me actually show you the last time that I cut off some versions. Um, and that was when uh, I decided to stop supporting Python 2 and everything below Python 3.6. Uh, in particular, everything below 3.6.1, which I decided was the a nice lowest common denominator here. And this was, you know, convenience as well as, you know, mental capacity stuff. Uh, so supporting Python 2 was a lot of work <laughs> um, for, for libraries and, you know, obscure bugs that were things that were either never going to get fixed in Python or were just like weird edge cases. Um, but by dropping Python 2, I could eliminate a lot of those as well as start using a lot uh, newer features in Python 3. I also decided to be Python 3.6 plus so that I could use you know, type annotations and f-strings. I guess I talked about that earlier. Um, and I dropped 3.6.0 because of uh, typing name tuple being broken. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the last set of reasonings here, which is like, you know, if it's hard for me to support, I'm going to try and avoid supporting it because I feel like that's too much work. Um, yeah, and then the last thing that I want to talk about here is how you actually indicate that you have dropped a version. Uh, I'm going to be talking specifically about libraries here. Um, let's see, workspace, pi upgrades. So I'm going to be talking specifically about libraries here. Uh, and in libraries, you can specify a Python requires. And if you're using a modern version of pip, I believe 9.0.1 is the minimum version that properly supports this. Uh, you can set in your setup.py or setup.cfg. Uh, I'm using declarative metadata, so it's going to be in setup.cfg. But you specify this Python requires field. Uh, the way this actually works is if we go to, uh, let's do a simple page for pi upgrade, for instance. Uh, the way this actually works is, uh yeah so the way the way it actually works is it sets a special attribute on the the index page based on this metadata so you can see here at this version of pi upgrade i supported at least 2.7 but not 3.0 3.1 3.2 or 3.3 so this is 3.4 plus or python 2.7 um but yeah the way, the way this works is you set this little bit of metadata and pip will pick up on that when it installs stuff and so that's how you drop particular versions of Python. So you can see here that I've I've dropped 3.6.0, but everything 3.6.1 and above works. Um, and if we look at all repos, let's see, repos, 
Use delay import time waterfall. If we look at this particular one, you can see that I've done 3.7 and above here because this is uh, specific to Python 3.7. Um, but anyway, that is how I decide what versions of Python to support, as well as how to drop older versions. Uh, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.